Hello there, learners. Welcome to another lesson in technical drafting. For this lesson, we will discuss about the drafting aids in AutoCAD. Drawing with AutoCAD is really just like drawing on a drawing board, just as you use triangles and T-square to draw straight vertical and horizontal lines or measure angles using protractor or even erasers to the leads drawn objects on your drawing paper, you can also do the same thing in AutoCAD, as AutoCAD utilizes a special set of little helpers, which is called as the drawing aids. What are drawing aids? Drawing aids or drafting aids are essential modes and methods of entering data that once you get used to, allows you to create measured drawing with comfort and ease. It works as the same way as your traditional drafting tools, such as your T-square, triangles, protractors, and others. Drafting aids can be found on your status bar. And each of these aids can just be toggled on and off to activate. Some additional settings are also accessible by just a right-click in each individual status bar toggles. We will discuss each drawing aids on the following slides. The first drawing aid that we are going to discuss is the grid. The grid is a regular pattern of dots or lines displayed on our screen which acts like a visual aid and at the same time provides you a general idea about the size of the drawn objects. So as you can see now on my drawing screen are blurred lines that looks like a graphing paper. Those are actually the grids. So to toggle it on, you can click the icon here on the status bar. The icon of the grid looks like a mesh or a grill. Also, you have the option to Activate the grid mode by pressing the F7 function key on your keyboard. We can also change the settings of the grid. To do that, just make a right click on the icon and then choose grid settings. And then after that, the drafting settings dialog box will appear. Here, you have the option to change the appearance of the grid from lines to dots and as well as the spacing between those that lies on the x-axis and y-axis. For example, here we, on the grid style, we want to change the current appearance of our grids from lines to dots. So just click on the 2D model space. And then here on the grid spacing, we can also change the spacing between the lines along the x-axis and as well as on the y-axis. So from 5, let's change it, for example, to 10. So depending on your preference, you can always change the settings here on the drafting settings dialog box. So once you're done, just click OK. So you will notice now that from blurred lines or from lines, the grid, the appearance of your grid changed to dots. And at the same time, the spacing in between change, which is now much wider compared to earlier. Just beside the grid mode icon, you can find the snap mode. This drawing aid, once toggled on, will allow you to pick points which lie on a regular grid. Aside from clicking on the icon, you can also activate it by pressing the function key F9 on your keyboard. So how does the snap mode works? Let's say for example, we're going to draw a line. So once you set or specify the first point, you will feel that once you move your cursor, it is somehow restricted on a certain distance, which in this case, it is only moving every spacing on the grid. So to change the settings of the snaps, you can do that 
also on the drafting settings dialog box and to access that just make a right click on the snap mode icon and then choose the snap settings so here on the drafting settings dialog box the snap settings are here on the left side here you can change the spacing on the x and y and as well as the snap type so by default it is set on the grid snap and regular snap the isometric and the polar snap are used on on are used for a different purpose so here so earlier when we tried to draw a line our cursor is restricted from moving every 10 units or the spacing is 10 units if we will try to change it let's say for example we're going to make it five then press ok and then if you will try to draw a line again you will notice that once you specify the first point your the movement of your cursor is half of the movement earlier because we already changed the snap settings to or the snap spacing to five Considered as the simplest among all the drawing aids in AutoCAD is the ortho mode. The word ortho is a short name for orthogonal, which means either vertical or horizontal. You can access or activate the ortho mode function here on the status bar by clicking on its icon and you will notice that its icon looks like a right angle. Or you can just press the F8 function key on your keyboard to toggle it on. Once toggled on, lines or objects drawn here on your drawing area will be restricted or constrained from moving horizontally or vertically. So to demonstrate, let's draw a line. After specifying the first point, and if you will try to move your cursor, you will notice that your line is only going vertically or horizontally. But once you toggled off the ortho mode function, you can move your line in any direction, or you can move your cursor freely here on your drawing area. So whenever you are doing or drawing vertical lines or straight lines it is recommended that you turn on or toggled on the ortho mode function aside from that there are no special settings that must be set for the ortho mode function to work a flexible version of the ortho mode is called as the polar tracking or the polar snap if the ortho mode constrains your line from just being vertically or horizontally the polar tracking will let you snap into whatever angle you wish or you need to configure so to activate you can click the icon of the polar tracking here on your status bar which is just beside the ortho mode icon or you can just press F10 on your keyboard to activate so how does it really work so let's say for example we're going to draw to draw a line and let us toggle on the polar tracking so up uh, after specifying the first point you will notice that you can move your cursor and as well as your line here anywhere on your drawing area so it's free to move anywhere here on your drawing area and at the same time you will see a track those dotted lines are the tracks that is provided by the polar tracking function and as you move it along you will also notice that there is a space for the angle and it also provides you the angle of that line as you move it so polar track uh, using the polar track 
function is like the same thing as using the relative polar coordinates entering of values in AutoCAD. So with that, you can specify a specific angle. So just press the tab button on your keyboard and then you can just type in any angle that you need to draw. So let's say for example it's 39 degrees, just press enter.